Hey, I do it for a reason. I mean, I'm not just doing this randomly. I'm doing it for a reason. You see, what I want to do is I want to make sure that you understand the true things that drive the market. And that's why this video newsletter is like no other newsletter in the world, because I'm focusing on the things that actually drive markets. Take a look at these indicators as I go through the freebie and the paid up section today and just see that these indicators are highly, highly correlated with driving the market forward. So everybody else is looking at mainly stuff that's useless, and I'm showing you the real inside story. I'm not just making it up. All right, let's get right into it. And I'm certainly not making this up. This is very deadly serious. You must read it very closely, understand it, and live it. All right, let's get into the markets. Look at what's happened here. We had that big hiccup on Thursday. <clears throat> and then completely obliterated it and moved to new all-time highs. It's almost like Thursday, which was the 30th anniversary of the crash of 1987. I was there. That was my single most profitable day ever. But it's almost like that shook the confidence of the market. And people were saying, oh, my God, it's the 30th anniversary. We're going to have an incredible crash. That day, the market dropped 40 percent in one day at one point and ended up the day down almost 23 percent. But after they got over their superstitious jitters, whammo, new highs. Now, also, too, look at what happened to the purple predictor. The purple predictor had been lagging behind the price action, but then has accelerated up to actually be a little bit above it, showing that the smart money is coming into this market, taking it to another leg higher as we go into the most bullish seasonal time of the year. Dow. I'm showing this version of the chart because something highly unusual is happening. Now take a look at the green line and the red line and notice that they rarely get this far apart. The green line is uh, bullish pressure and the red line is bearish pressure. And you can see there's an incredible amount of bullish pressure in the market, but that the gap between them is now at an extraordinarily wide level. In fact, it makes me nervous that it's so wide because it normally only lasts at these levels maybe a week, maybe two weeks. So we need to watch this indicator very, very closely for an early indication of a short term top in the market. So I'm watching this one really closely. Now, the NASDAQ, of course, it had that hiccup as well. In fact, that bar looks like it's, a, it's like some type of a mistake. This is not as strong, you'll notice, as the S&P. Tech sector holding back a little bit. Why? Because of Apple. Apple's what's dragging the NASDAQ, uh, I shouldn't say lower, but it's not allowing it to move up as much as, as the other two indices, the Dow and the S&P. So without Apple, this would look just as strong. Okay, seasonality. We got the super popper on Friday as well after the big rally we saw late on Thursday. Purple predictor lagging a little bit, but uh, for now, I'm going to say, okay, fine. Let's just go with it. Now, our seasonal patterns just bullish, 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 bullish. What can I say? Yield curve is just the cap is off. This is not weighing on the market at all. You look back in October of last year, a year ago, to see what's going to happen this year. And you can see this is going to be a bullish situation here right now. This is putting a lot of extra wind in the sails of this bull market. Asset allocation pop to new highs. Money is flowing out of the bond market. You know, people, they say, well, where's this money coming from to buy stocks? Well, a big part of it is they're dumping bonds. They're dumping bonds and buying stocks. And this chart shows that. So there's a lot more money that can come into this stock market. Our risk decator, after getting slapped around last week, is starting to rebound again. And usually what happens is, is that the higher the risk decator is, the more risk the market is willing to take and therefore they're more aggressive at buying stocks. So our risk decator gives an idea of what's in the mind of the market in terms of how much risk they want to take. The more risk they want to take, the more aggressive they are at buying stocks and therefore the more the stock market goes up. All right, global shares grinding higher. I like the U.S. market more right now. Um, 
Bonds, look at what happened to them. Now, they were just, I told you last week we'd get up to the top of the gap. Uh, we failed. As soon as we got to the top of the gap left in late September, the market has just crapped out. And this is, they're just selling bonds like crazy in expectations of higher inflation, stronger economy, and a tighter Fed policy. So I've gotten more and more bearish as time goes on. I'll show you why in a second. But the one thing that's holding this market up is the purple predictor is quite bullish. So unless the purple predictor collapses in the next week, I got to believe that these bonds, yeah, they may go down to 123. They may even go down to 122. But that's about it. There's not a lot of downside potential here over the short run. Now, bond factors, take a look at the blue line. The blue line is the 10-year treasury in Germany. It's going up. That's putting upside pressure on U.S. interest rates. Look at it down at the bottom. That's the uh, that is the CRB index. It's grinding higher. Also, a leading indicator of inflation. And so it looks like that's starting to worry the market as well. The top line is gold. Gold it was skyrocketing, which is also an indication of inflation, but it's become weaker later. So that is hel uh, helping uh, be bullish for the uh, stock. Uh, bond market, but the other two indicators are clearly bearish. Now, the dollar. This is something I've been talking about for two months. That we were, we, I talked about how we were going to get a lack of downside momentum. Then I told you we're going to be in a uh, sideways uh, pattern, a, a range. We're in that range now, but look what developed just in the last week or so, a potential head and shoulders bottom. If we break above roughly 94 on the dollar index, that would be a major bottom, and it would suggest that we could get up to 97, which would be no big deal unless you're a short-term, highly leveraged trader, in which case it's all the money in the world. So watch that 94 level. Uh, if it breaks through that level, I think you should be long. All right. But if the dollar's strong, that doesn't help the gold market out at all. Look at this. It started to weaken again. A number of reasons. Let's take a look right here. The main reason is, first of all, the top indicator is neutral. The middle indicator is microscopically bullish, but dollar yen crapped out. And that is one of the major factors that is affecting the price of gold. You see, gold is a currency in effect. And so it keys off the value of the dollar. That's the biggest effect on the gold market. Not inflation, not crisis, none of that sort of stuff. Just simply the dollar. Now, in this case, we can see that the yen is really the controlling factor in the most important factor in the gold market right now. So I started to get a little excited there. I'm not so excited anymore. And oil. Now I'm starting, I, I, I don't have the time to show you, but I'm starting to get a little bit more bullish. So I've been talking about the trading range for quite some time, and I think well, that's probably a good way to think of it. But I think we got to move the high end of the range up a little bit, maybe to 54 or $55 a barrel, something like that. We're starting to see inventories come down. We're seeing some discipline in OPEC. And so the supply side is starting to look uh, a little bit better. At the same time, as the economy strengthens, which I expect, we will see higher demand. All right, freebies. Do I really have to go over this again? No, I don't think so. You know what to do. Subscribe, become one of the super cool kids, and uh, we will see you next week. Fully paid up members, hang on just a second.